Actually, Serena, I'll have you just clap. Perfect. That's it. Now I can sync. Job is done. So now when I get home, I take these three files and this audio file, and I line up that spike, and then that's how I make it so that way the everything it doesn't look like you know your mouth is moving when the words aren't coming out sort ah, of a thing so. nice yeah cool all right guys well we're sitting here with the people of sky top coffee correct good morning good morning good morning so when did you first start sky top like what like how long have you been a business not the idea but like the official business of it yeah, Skytop is just over one year old. Okay. Um, officially started in July of 2018, Correct. and we, um, you know, it was a long culmination to kind of get things started. Yeah. Uh, been in the industry for the better part of 20 years, uh, working for many different coffee yeah. roasters, and uh, finally got to a place where it was uh, it was time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pulling up my notes, my questions that I wrote down. Yeah. Because I was, uh, usually when I like have somebody coming on the podcast, I, um, I try not to like research too much and I'll just sit down and like try and come up with a bunch of questions. Yeah. And so that's what I was doing last night. Awesome. Um, so it's been in business for just over a year, been a business and, uh, Aaron, you have been in coffee, you know, I felt like kind of an idiot when I first met you guys at the uh, Marriott because I was like, oh, you should check out Water Street, <laughs> you know, and try and sell them coffee. And you're like, oh, yeah, we know them. And then I said something else. And you're like, I've actually been doing this for like a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I no. definitely don't. No, <laughs> no man. <laughs> I, um, I know it, as we were talking um, and you were like, oh, yeah, you know, you should talk with these different folks. And. I know I, we yeah. the conversation led into the <laughs> fact that like no we're we're small on purpose yeah and that's, <laughs> that's hilarious yeah no we we really like that and we yeah. want to we are it is our goal to to really keep the company in that kind of mindset where yeah. we um we stay small um we know there's going to be lots of opportunities that hopefully present themselves over time yeah um but it's really important um that we we keep our scale at a space where um. We're never outgrowing um, our ability to provide super high quality product. Yeah. So you come from coffee, mm -hmm. and Serena, you are a graphic designer. Um, I actually come from a retail and marketing uh, okay. background. Okay. And I went back to school um, when we started the company. Um, when we had the idea of the company, I actually before we even started it, I knew that I wanted to go back to school for graphic design and art. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of melded into, well, if we're going to do the uh, design in-house, then this is what I want to do. That's, That's the part cool. of the, the role that I want to have. Yeah. Um, I'm also, uh, you know, certified in certain things in coffee as well. Yeah. But, you know, like, m I really love the, uh, the overall creative side of what yeah. we're doing. That's huge, man. To have a small business that can have the ability to do something like graphic design or marketing in-house and not have to hire that out. I mean, that's... That's really a big deal. Yeah, I mean, social media marketing definitely takes a lot of time. You know, mm. when they change the algorithm, I'm still trying to get a handle on it. Yeah. Um, you know, like, it, it's different. I don't it's think different. anybody, like, <laughs> I've listened to interviews. Even the people at, like, Facebook and Instagram don't know anything about the algorithm. You know, yeah. it's just, like, has morphed into something. Yeah. I'm happy with our organic growth. Um, I, you know, I feel like that's something that I, I like yeah. about social media. I like the ability to kind of... Um, play around with it. You know, we're, we're yeah. getting some good reaction. We're getting some really good organic uh, followings. Um, we cool. have a lot of engagement, which is yeah. really nice, you know, for the amount of yeah. actual followers that we have. Yeah, for sure. You know, we're, uh, we're under 2,000. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully we'll, we'll grow. You know, yeah. maybe this podcast will be our little catalyst of yeah, growth. I don't know. But, you know <laughs> I always... All you 14,000 <laughs> followers out there. <laughs> I think that's probably been the hardest thing that I've learned uh, in terms of like our social is that you know, uh, those 14,000 people, not all of them see what we're doing, you know, <laughs> like there's sure. only a small percentage of them. And to the point where like, I, w I wanted to test it. So when we did a party uh, in September, I went and messaged all of them. So I would just message as many people as I could every day, which I think they cap you at like 200, somewhere around there. So I would just message them, be like, we're having this party, we're having this party, you know, just come out to this party. And, um, 
yeah, I still didn't like reach all of them. Like not all those people saw that, you know, so that's, wow. a, that's the thing about algorithms <laughs> for social that sucks is you could have, you know, hundred thousand people, whatever it is, a million people follow you. There's only a small percentage of them that are actually going to see what you post. And those are the ones that are deliberately following you. You know, gotcha. Even if I ran an ad on Facebook, sorry for, yeah, I love talking about this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Even if I ran an ad on Facebook right now and just wanted to target my 3000 people that follow us on Facebook or that like our page, it would cost me about two to $400 to reach the people that already like my page. Wow. Yeah. So That's it's interesting. I know it's really challenging. I mean, yeah. the whole thing is difficult. Have yeah. you played around with, with that where, you know, all right, I'm going to spend $200 on advertising to these folks. And like, what did you see from it? So when I started, um, eat low, actually our anniversary comes up on this next week. It's going to be our fourth year. Um, and when we first started, I was doing the, it's cause this started as just social media for restaurants mm -hmm. getting paid to do their stuff. And, um, at first it was just posting and that, you know, whatever at the time, like I was taking pictures on with my iPhone and they were better than restaurants and they looked great and it worked. And then I picked up, uh, the market diner as an account like three and a half years ago. And with him, I just like, I said, well, you're already posting pictures, so like good pictures. So I'm going to do it, you know, the same thing. Uh, the copy isn't going to be that different. You know, it's going to be a little unique because they were posting like dumb stuff. Like, you know, he had some big company in Texas. So like their posts were like, you know, what's your favorite pasta dish? You know, just dumb stuff that didn't really work. Um, so I was like, all right, what can I do? So I started boosting his post $5 every single day. And the first full year of doing that, they went up like 40%. Wow. Yeah. So it was, so I, that was just the one only thing that changed. Mm -hmm. So I've done that. So now every client that I do, it's every post has to be boosted with by four or five bucks. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah I've boosted some things before where I've done, um, I compiled a video mm -hmm. in promo, um, and it was really kind of funny and it was off the cuff and I just thought it was yeah. It had a nice little um, sense of humor to it. Yeah. And I boosted that mm -hmm. and it reached almost 12,000 people. Wow. That's so that awesome. was pretty impressive yeah. for something, you know, that I, I want to say it maybe cost me like $35 to yeah. boost it. It was really minimal. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I ran it for a set number of days and I, I reached my target demographic, yeah, you know, right. like, you know, coffee drinkers <laughs> yeah. and coffee lovers and, <laughs> you know, people that think about coffee right. or, or whatever else. And, um, I was very happy with that. And yeah. I, I pin it sometimes to the That's top cool. of Facebook or I'll, yeah. I'll resend it in Instagram occasionally and yeah. just so people can get a good laugh. They haven't right. seen it. So that's the biggest, you know, I've, um, I've ran into people who have just like kept stuff out there and just you, you're, it's being seen by so many new people and different people. Um, we have, I have $5 a day on a Google ad for if somebody who searches local restaurants, it pops up. Do you want to save five dollars at a local restaurant? So, stuff like sense. that, and we'll get we get card sales from that. And That's cool. Yeah, I've got a photography thing out there. So just like keeping stuff out there, um, you know. And it's but it it has changed. Uh, Instagram, I you know I I know Facebook owns them, so it probably won't go away anytime soon. But it's I think it's going away. Do you? Yeah, it's decline. It's in decline for sure. Yeah, I um I I, I know everybody that I know within the industry has been like really very active on Instagram. Yeah. And I feel like it's, um, it's it, it, older folks are, who's still like very active into yeah. the Facebook. Yes. But, um, but really IG is yeah. kind of taken over for sure. Yeah. And it, but it's like, so I could make a post, uh, four months ago that would have gotten, you know, 20% engagement and that same post today, the same time and all that kind of stuff, same everything would get, you know, 10% engagement. So interesting. I don't know what it is that changed. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I, one of the things that I've noticed with it is, um, so the story feeds really go very quickly. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's, uh, or I'm, yeah, just a nor your normal feed, mm -hmm. uh, posts go very quickly. It's the stuff that goes into the storylines that yeah. I think like, 
you, you almost have to do two posts. Oh, if you yeah. really want to see like hey, people are yeah. looking at this. Well, there's two types of people. I think there's some people that literally scroll through a feed. Yeah. You know, and then there's other people that just click on the first story in their lineup. Yes. And it just plays like television for them. Right. And and they're like, oh no no I missed that one and I click back. Yeah. Or you know oh no don't want to say it click yeah. forward click forward click forward. Yeah, yeah. I do that too. Yeah, yeah. I mean when I you know I'd spend too much time watching stuff on you know consuming just content on on Facebook and Instagram, but I do that same thing yeah it is like 20 minutes before i go to bed that's what i'll do you know um it's kind of annoying but <laughs> yeah they say you're supposed to um uh tell in your in your feed uh so in your hard post you make on your business instagram page you should tell a story not sell anything not ask the customer to do anything and then sell in your story feed yeah. So, you know, get like put in your story, come in and get this latte, buy the scone, get this bag of coffee, whatever. And then in your hard feed, it should be like, you know, here we're cupping, you know, here's, you know, whatever we're roasting today. You know, here's the hours. Don't come in, you know, <laughs> but um, <laughs> no. actually, if, <laughs> if, if, if you want, you can borrow this book on the back. It's Gary Vaynerchuk. It's called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And that's the sure. concept for social. Yep. Oh, very you know, cool. it's three just things out there, not trying to sell. And then your fourth post, your right hook is asking them to come in and do something. Right on. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. We love new resources. Yep. Yeah. He's a uh, Vayner Media, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah. I know who he is. Oh, okay. okay. So Paul Daly, who we were talking about before we started, um, has like gone down and paid the whatever, which is a lot of money to like go through their four D's like they're all day intensives. And I believe he's on with their other smaller group for mentoring. So, I mean, you know, he's pretty into it and the success he's had from it is, you know, pretty ridiculous as well. Nice. Um, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I, I love this stuff. I absolutely love this. <laughs> yeah, stuff. no, it's cool. It's okay. <laughs> it's We're cool. sharing yeah. coffee and talking about social yeah. media. <laughs> yeah. All right. So back to coffee. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, why are we here? No. <laughs> Um, this is the, it was a 10 minute ad for social media. Uh, <laughs> social media. <that's> yeah. <laughs> so Aaron, you, you, I mean, you got started 20 years ago. What was the first thing that like kicked you off into coffee? The, um, yeah, the, the first thing that really got me, uh, kicked off into coffee was espresso. Um, started working for a large distributor of, uh, Lavazza espresso. Uh, yeah. And, um, you know, it was, not only was it my introduction to kind of the, the coffee industry, but it was also my introduction into um, what was just starting to become a huge fad within the industry or a huge trend, I should say, of single cup. Mm. So not only was I selling espresso, but I was selling mm. a capsule based product. Mm. And um, that eventually led me into uh, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters, where I spent a considerable amount of time yeah. and uh, continued selling, uh, you know, capsule based coffees and also whole bean and frack. Yeah. Was it was getting that first job just getting a job or was it like, man, I really like coffee. I think I want to try and sell it. Yeah. It, so it actually started as um, I was working for a vending and amusement distribution mm. company. Um, and coffee was just one of the product lines that they sold. Uh, as it turned out, you know, I, I had been obviously exposed to coffee like everybody else, yeah. uh, it, it, you know, that, <laughs> that likes to drink the, that beverage in the morning. <laughs> so, you know, I thought it was cool that it was something that I had an opportunity to sell when I got there. That's cool. Um, and basically realized very quickly that there weren't a lot of people doing anything with it within this company mm -hmm. and that it was a super high growth category mm -hmm. within, um, the office coffee segment in general. Yeah. Um, so when it came to the vending companies that were coming in, uh, they were looking to purchase coffee. They were buying it from many different places. And, you know, very quickly, I wanted to become another one of those places that they came for their product to put into offices. Mm. Um, as it happened, the company that I was working for had 12 offices across the United States. Mm. Um, once they realized that I was having success with it here locally, uh, they opened a door for me to expand this product set across the United States. Wow. So I got to take a business from zero to over a million dollars within a year. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I um, and I could travel too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was very cool. Um, and that was really kind of that was like my first year within specialty coffee was mm. taking, you know, this very. Um, 
you know, niche product, especially yeah. espresso. Even now, hmm. espresso accounts for maybe 20, 25% of yeah. the beverages that can, coffee beverages that get consumed. Hmm. It continues to grow every year at double digit rates, hmm. but it's like a very small piece of that pie. So it has yeah. a lot of room to grow. Um, and hmm. yeah, it was just, that was really cool. Uh, yeah. To this day, still love espresso. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what is it about that? Because I feel like you're either like kind of really swanky and like really get into espresso uh, or you like just know that it's a component in your latte uh, or you call it espresso and you know <laughs> you still throw it in your mis- Mr. Coffee Maker and think that it's doing something extra, you know? Right. Because <laughs> yeah. espresso and coffee, there is really, I mean, uh, unless I'm completely wrong, there's no difference between espresso and coffee. Right. It's just the, obviously the extraction, the ground, that kind of stuff. Yep. And there's right. traditional espresso blends, you know, when you roast them. So an authentic traditional yeah. espresso blend for yes. sure. Yeah. Um, I think is something that, you know, we're definitely going to be bringing to the table. Oh, you that's know? cool. Yeah. When we open. So, yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're, you know, we're going to try and be as authentic as, as possible, you yeah. know? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I love running into like, if I'll do events or stuff for Cabal and, um, so I find it really, uh, cause we've done some stuff at like car dealerships mm-hmm. and I've, we've done some stuff at like furniture stores where we'll do like pop-ups and like just make them coffee for a couple hours. Yep. And I always get like that one salesman that comes out and he's like, oh yeah, you got any of that espresso out there or, you know, <laughs> or he'll just like try and throw something out there. Yeah. Um, and uh, that like lets me know that he knows what he's talking about with coffee, and I'm like, oh yeah, yep, that's this is espresso. That's exactly yeah. what this is. <laughs> yeah, we love events like that. You know, we've uh, it's kind of funny because over the last um, about over the last year and a half, you know, we've been doing every event that that yeah. somebody asked us to do. You that's know, cool. pretty much anything that we could do. You know, within the realm, yeah. um, because you know, we at the time we both had, you know, other op- occupations as well. Yeah. Um. So. We would do every farmer's market, every, you know, Mm. we would do beer festivals and whiskey festivals. (laughs) We'd go out to Buffalo and Albany and Dutchess County and, you know. Yeah. So we were kind of just traveling all around the state um, doing as many events as possible. And yeah, you do run into people that are, you know, really into coffee. And that's a lot of fun, I think, you know, especially when we do everything um, fresh pour over. Yeah, right. So, you know, you've seen us at events, yeah. um, you know, we'll just be hustling, you know, three, four kettles <laughs> at a time, nitro cold brew, whatever. And um, yeah, the uh, the amount of appreciation, I think, on a lot of people's faces yes. when we're literally making their coffee right there in front of them yeah. at like basically That's what huge. you would have as a slow bar, Yeah, you know, in your, in your own brick and mortar. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and people don't mind waiting and it's no. really cool. And yeah, people love to see a pour over or, chem- or something being made. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. One of the most interesting things that I found through my experience um, within the industry is how um, emotionally tied people are to coffee. Yes. Yeah. Everybody, so that salesman that you were talking about, yeah. everybody has like their own um, story yeah. for coffee. Uh, their own ritual on right. how they they make their coffee every day or the particular shop or diner or convenience store that they go and get it. Um, it's one of those beverages that is more than just for a lot of people. I have it, it, it you know, I'm, yeah. I'm getting it and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pouring a cup of it. it. There's there's a full ritual that goes behind it. And yeah. I think that's what's really interesting about mm-hmm. it. Um, what I what I really love is, is that you do get that interaction from yeah. people because not only do, you know, they love this beverage. They want to share. They want to share with you yeah. why they love it, right. what they love about right. it, you know, and I, I find that really interesting. Yeah. It's um one of the things that hooked me into this business <laughs> all those years ago is like, um, you know, when you hand somebody a cup of coffee mm-hmm. and you see the smile that comes yeah. on their face, it's like, it's magic. It's, yeah. I've, um, you know, I've sold lots of things throughout my career. I've been a professional salesman for, for, for many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but once I was able to do that with coffee and I could feel that reaction, yeah. that was like, that was it. I was hooked. Yeah. So as, as mm. much as I've been hooked on coffee itself and this beautiful beverage, yeah. it's being able to, uh, get that feeling from yeah. being able to share that experience with somebody else. It's, it's powerful. Yeah. Yeah, it really is, man. I mean, it's amazing the people that you I run into out there who everybody has like kind of their brand. I feel like coffee is a little bit like cigarettes, you know, like you have your brand. Sure. You know, oh, like sure. you're either yeah, yeah. a camel or Marlboro, <laughs> you know, like 
it's hard to kind of go, but I mean, there are people who do. No question. Um, but yeah, there's some people and it's usually older people that I run into who are like, they will have some story of Kubal back in the day when it first started and you know, yada, yada, yada. And it's just like, when you bring up coffee, it's like, that's the first thing that they go to. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. The, um, I, one of my favorite, uh, discussions or talking, um, you know, talking points that I'll bring up with people, especially like our age or maybe a little bit older yeah. is bring up a percolator yeah. and you will see the person's eyes just totally <laughs> light up and they automatically get transported to like, uh, their grandmother's kitchen yeah. or sure. their parents' kitchen when they were growing up. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I remember the smell of the percolator in my grandmother's kitchen to this day. And it's <laughs> like, you know, there's nothing that smells like yeah. that. It's, it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. So you... we still do that too. We still oh, make yeah. our coffee every single way. Yeah. So we don't just cool. do like pour overs at home, <laughs> yeah. you know, we'll still make it every single way that a customer or a guest hmm. of ours might make it That's cool. so that we can actually tell them, okay, so this is the grind size you're going to want for this particular yeah. machine. Hmm. Cause it does vary so much. You know, oh to get yeah, that for sure. Perfect extraction. So. Yeah. It's the, I, there's something about it. Like, um, we have a, a Ninja coffee maker at home. And we have a Keurig. Yep. Um, and Rebecca buys uh, the big canister of Wegmans pre-ground coffee that's like 99 cents, you know, and lasts you for a summer. Yep. Uh, <laughs> she she buys that for the Keurig. Um, and then uh, I, oddly enough, buy Starbucks uh, ground coffee for the Ninja because I don't know why. Like, even if I buy, even if I get a bag from work and grind it myself, there's just something that's off about it. And I don't know what it is that Starbucks has done to their grinders, but it's like the perfect grind every for the Ninja. I don't yeah. know why, but yeah, man, there's just something about. It. Even if I grind it, because I have a grind a burr grinder. Even if I grind it at home, there's just it's not the same. I don't yeah, know what it is. Yeah, there's science involved. Yeah, there's a lot of science. And I coffee. think I thought I knew that science. I was like, all right, <laughs> it needs to be. I'm looking for this. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you can really geek fun. out on the science yeah, quite for a sure. bit. Yeah. 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 And it's really frustrating how much just the little fluctuation in a grind size can really adjust the coffee. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Especially when you're dialing in an espresso machine. I yeah. mean, you know. Oh, it, yeah. yeah it they, can take you 20 minutes. It can take yeah. you an hour. You know. <laughs> when they first told me that at work, it was like, you're, that's ridiculous. That doesn't, ma- you don't have to do that every day. What are you out of <laughs> your mind? Yeah. Like, yes, you do. It's like, no, that's not true. And yeah. I tried to pull a shot. And it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> right? It tasted bad. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. I have a Canon that I used long time ago. Oh, really? Yeah, it's still decent. You know, it's yeah. like one of the Rebels, you know? Yeah. Decent enough. Yeah. I've never done video with it, though. Oh, you don't have to have really crazy stuff, you yeah. know? Um, I mean, Joe Rogan, who has like the you know most listened to podcast out there and you know, crazy YouTube channel. I mean, he just has cheap camcorders that he yeah. does. So he's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, he is, <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's, you know, it's easy to get caught into the, I have to go buy the most expensive, nicest version of everything. And that thing was 150 bucks and it'll work just fine. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, so when was like, when did you ever like talk about having your own like coffee shop or roasting your own coffee for sale or anything like that? Like when did that kind of come about in your career? I, um, you know, so I've been a, a Q grader, which is the equivalent of being a, a sommelier for coffee for, yeah. uh, right around five years. So basically where this all kind of starts is like, I, I love to taste coffee and yeah. I love to taste lots of coffees. And I like to sit and grade them and talk about them and, you know, really like just kind of digest what I'm tasting and why I'm tasting it. So roasting actually just kind of like started happening, happening very naturally where Mm. I was like, oh, well, I really like this coffee. Um, I wonder what it would taste like if I was able to make it taste more chocolatey Mm. or more maple syrupy or, you know, all of these different uh, flavor Mm. components that roasting, um, you know, at various uh, levels brings out naturally within the coffees. Mm. So that's kind of how it started. And then basically, you know, once you have a lot of coffee hanging around that you roasted, (laughs) you got to do something with it. So (laughs) when I 
think like too, you know, within specialty coffee, and if you're kind of relating it to the Specialty Coffee Association, there's many yeah. different pathways that you can take, many different certifications that you can grab um, that are, you know, very extensive. And yeah. not only do they build your network base um, within the industry, because as a whole, coffee is very small. Yeah. Most people know each other. Yeah. Um, they've met overseas at mm. Origin Trip or, mm. you know, they see each other at Expo every year. And um, I think being professionals within the industry, uh, you know, you kind of notice like which pathway you want to take. Yeah. And, you know, like all everybody kind of starts out with the foundations of coffee and then kind of goes from there. Right. So, you know, Aaron has decided that, you know, the roasting aspect of everything was kind of the next natural step. Mm -hmm. You know, he is a, a certified coffee lab inspector and a, and a <laughs> you know, a double certified Q grader now because he just recerted, which is an insane process <laughs> to recertify um, that I think almost broke him. <laughs> but, you know, it's really kind of wonderful. Like he's taken yeah. not only the sales aspect of coffee, which you can just do sales, right. you know, yeah. but you take it as your true passion and your true love and you, you really learn the um, ins and outs of the industry. Yeah. And, you know, my pathway, I'm going to be in New York City at Coffee Project New York oh, um, cool. to get my barista level two oh, certification cool. through the SCA. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's really wonderful. Huh. And then my next one is professional. So Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so there hopefully is... I'll be able to master the latte art for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so there is that kind of stuff in the coffee world. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we're we're both really big believers in, you know, furthering your education. Um, like all like all passions, right? Like you, yeah. you, you have to, you know, not only dedicate yourself to it, but also like expand it. So, yeah. you know, once you kind of start going down this rabbit hole of specialty coffee, there's so many different ways you can, um, you know, continue to expand it, yeah. expand your knowledge of it. And as far as I know, there's no, there's no limit. I mean, right. I'm friends with guys that have, um, you know, basically written the Q courses, have mm. been in this industry for twice the amount of time that I have, and they're still learning about all of the different aspects of coffee. Yeah. It's wild. I mean, um, you know, talking to Sam Bender, it's like, and I mean, he's super into it. Uh, it doesn't sound like nearly as much as uh, you two are into coffee, but <laughs> Sam's like super into coffee. No right? doubt. And uh, up until this point, I would say Sam was the most into coffee, like person into coffee that I've ever met in Syracuse or knew of in Syracuse. <laughs> um, but it's amazing. Like, uh, like, it's funny talking to Sam, even though he's sitting there, like just making a post this week of like, uh, was it the like extracting, like what's that, what's that tool that he has? The, I don't want to say like the extractometer, but I know it's that's the refractometer. Yeah. Refractometer. Yeah. <laughs> it was simple. Yeah. I was close. <laughs> and Sam is an awesome coffee nerd for sure. Yeah, man. We've but, nerded out before. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like he makes a post of that this week, but two weeks ago on the podcast, he was like, there's good coffee or bad coffee. I don't, you know. And so it's just funny to see. And I feel like you, you two are the same. Like, uh, even though you're deep into coffee. They're still just like coffee, right? You oh, know, yeah. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. It's possible to have both views at the same time of coffee. Absolutely. Yeah. We, you know, we, we try and make the best coffee as accessible as possible. Yeah. You know, if people want to nerd out on it and geek out on it with us, yeah. I'm happy to talk all day long <laughs> about it. Um, but if you just want a beautiful cup of organic coffee, right. I got that for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, here you go. Yeah. One, so. one of the things that um, I take with me uh, was my experience at Green Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, I got to work with some folks that are uh, basically icons within the coffee industry, yeah. but they really brought this very... Vermont down home yeah. um, attitude to it, right? Yeah. And um, you know, you find Green Mountain Coffee it, all over the place. Yeah. Really good restaurants, gas stations. Yeah, it was very egalitarian in the sense of like, hey, we produce a really good product. Mm -hmm. We feel like everybody should have an, a, an opportunity to have a really good cup of coffee, mm -hmm. and that's something that I truly internalized from my experience there, where it's like, yep, I can sit down and talk coffee with anybody, mm. you know, in the industry, but at the same point in time, like Serena had said, I really just want to hand you a great cup of coffee and yeah. see you smile. Like, that's, yeah. that's right. what it's much. about. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, I'm thinking let's test my knowledge of coffee. All right. By me asking you some questions. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. This is an elimination round. <laughs> what do we win? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you get 
like that bag of recess back there. Oh, that's what you. Sweet. <laughs> what about the bear? It's the like bear. four months old, but you can. No. <laughs> um, I keep it because I love. Oh, I keep it because we did the a video where I was, you know, doing the roasters at the time, and so I got a bag from each. And uh, it just coffee smells good. Yeah, it does. Yeah, if I have to make a delivery for coffee and I use my Jeep, like the worst part of my day then is like getting it out of the Jeep because it smells so good. Yeah, yeah, true. So, um, how long from the uh, roasting the day that it comes out of the roaster mm. to the day that it should be discarded, like not consumed? Gotcha. What's that time frame? It's a really good question. Um, you know, everybody has different answers for it. Yeah. So, um, so I've learned. <laughs> what I would say is, um, depending on how the coffee is stored, yeah. I, I always recommend that it gets consumed within 90 days okay. uh, of being roasted. That said, um, there are lots of different processes that coffee companies use to keep their coffee fresh yeah. longer. Um, so they will flush the, the packaging that it comes in with nitrogen. So it removes yeah. all of the oxygen. Um, and in essence, that's what's, that's, what's making your coffee not fresh anymore is, right. is oxygen. It's oxidizing. Uh, so as long as you're really able to keep your coffee out of like light, heat, and oxygen, those three elements are what degrade it. If mm. you can keep your coffee away from those three things, I mean, you can keep it very for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, there is um, there is a gentleman out in Boston, Massachusetts, by the name of George Howell, mm -hmm. who is um, you know internationally known as a grand master within the coffee industry, mm -hmm. and he is deep freezing roasted coffee. Really? Yep. And he is serving it out to a year after it's been roasted. Wow. And he's it's superb. And he's also mm. waiting over a year to roast green coffee after it's been deep frozen. Really? So there's lots of experimentation going on within wow. the industry right now. And that's why, like, mm. so the bag of coffee that I brought yeah. in for you today, like, please try to consume that within 90 yeah. days. But the answer really to your question is yeah. there, there is no hard and fast rule to this. Like okay. it's all still being explored right now. Hmm. That's wild. Yeah. 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 Uh, is coffee like a loaf of bread where like you, uh, like once it's roasted, you want it in the hopper right away or should it like take time to sit? That's a great question. And I think a lot of that depends on the roast level. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of experiments with our own coffee. Um, what we find with lighter roast coffees is that they don't really hit their peak flavor pro their peak flavor profiles until almost two weeks after roasting. Okay. So letting them degas for almost two weeks before you put them in a hopper yeah. is is optimal. Mm -hmm. Um another thing that we're starting to see within the industry, um, uh, Co coffee company out of Portland, Oregon by the name of Proud Mary. Mm -hmm. They are originally an Australian based coffee company. Mm. They just invented the first um, freeze. It's a freezer and it's also a coffee hopper. So what they're doing is, is they're, they're letting their coffees degas for two weeks, two mm. to three weeks, whatever they've deemed as their, their perfect time. They're putting it in this freezer right? Which mm. is basically attached to the hoppers mm. of their grinders. So wow. when they go to dose for a coffee, it's frozen at two weeks and like, and then they, they dose fresh and grind it and brew wow. it right there. It's a really interesting setup. Um, That's wild. You can actually find pictures of it online. Uh -huh. um, they yeah. have a, a cutout mm. like in the wall so you can see the freezer part that's of wild. the hoppers and then the rest of it is not in the freezer area huh. so it's designed that's crazy. specifically for that yeah that's yeah. wild yeah huh yeah it's interesting we were thinking about like what happens with condensation because you don't want condensation yeah. in your grinder and i guess it doesn't happen huh that's yeah. wild i know <laughs> maybe like i wonder if how cold that freezer is i don't know yeah i don't know yeah. that's a great question that is a good question <laughs> yeah one of the interesting facts to know about uh, frozen coffee is yeah. that what one of the things that they have been able to determine is that uh, frozen coffee actually grinds more consistently yeah so as it fractures within the, within the uh, burrs of the grinder mm -hmm. it fractures more evenly which makes for a more consistent uh, brew once yeah. you brew the coffee yeah that's what I was thinking if it is that if it's really cold um then you kind of get rid of all, and it stays that cold, then you kind of get rid of all of that moisture that could be in. Right. I think of like Sumatra, like our dark roast Sumatra that's, you know, it's oily mm -hmm. and kind of wet and, you know. 
if you freeze that, like if it's really, really cold. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, you know, we're not talking residential freezers right. where it yeah. can absorb yeah. odors and, <laughs> yeah. and things like that. You yeah. know, please don't store your coffee yeah. that way. I'm going to go home and cut a hole in my freezer. <laughs> <laughs> put my, nice. Put my know. $50 grinder. You know, right we next. always tell people, please don't store your coffee in a refrigerator because it's yeah. absorbent and it'll eat yeah. all the odors. So, you yeah, know, that's wild. There you go. <laughs> well, I'm glad with those two questions that I was wrong in both of them. <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong it's there's yeah. there's a lot of leeway on yeah. both of those i mean there's so much that's being discovered even now I yeah so. all the time i mean even with like you know fermentation processes and things like that it, yeah. that's being done at origin you know it's not just washed and 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 yeah you know natural coffees anymore there's right. so many different processes yeah so it's wild you know it's it's um it's funny like thinking of like how to i mean at the end of the day um, I just think I, I think of it like compared to like wine. Mm-hmm. Um, there's master level sommeliers out there who, um, would be upset if you drank like a you know bottle of Barefoot, right? You know the fact that that exists probably offends them, <laughs> and um, it shares the shelf, <laughs> right? Uh, but for somebody like you know, you two who know what you're talking about when it comes to coffee and are obviously, you know, not just because you've Googled the heck out of it, uh, but because you're you know, in it and gone through the education. Like if somebody walked in here with uh, Dunkin' Donuts, like you'd still be okay with that. I grew up in Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, so Dunkin' Donuts is, you know, pretty much like Starbucks out yeah, there. You right. know, it's, it's, it's a religion. Yeah. Um, you know, you go, you get your Dunks regular and people just know at the <laughs> store how to put the right amount of cream and sugar in it. Yeah. It's I know. not just right. black coffee. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm unoffended by anybody's choice. Yeah. Um, because that's your choice. I mean, right. If I hand you a cup of coffee and you put a ton of cream and sugar in it, mm-hmm. that's your coffee. Do with it what you yeah, will. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if that's the way you like to drink it, then have at it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I gave you the most beautiful cup of organic coffee I can give you right. at the time. Do with it what you will. Yeah. So. I, I think the biggest thing is um, really like uh, getting people to step outside of just the, the norm when mm-hmm. they do try coffee. So, yeah. hey, yeah, if you're like normally that. a dark roast drinker, Try a light roast. If you're a light roast drinker, try an espresso, try a dark roast, you know, just try different things. Yeah. 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 I like uh, going to IBU when I first went there uh, um, maybe two years ago and Big Mike, who's like the owner and, uh, you know, main guy over there, he was... I was trying to decide which of the 12 beers they had that I wanted to drink. And his first question, how do you take your coffee? You know, because, you know, if you drink it black, you'll like this. If you put a lot of cream and sugar, you'll like this, you know. Yep. So it's it's funny how, like, things like that. How do you take your coffee? Because that tells them how, what you'll like. You yeah. Know? So, and I vary. I like cream and sweet and low from Dunkin' Donuts and everything else. I drink black. That's cool. Sure. I don't know why. You know, I think... Um, we had always roasted our coffees uh, light to medium because it brings out just kind of that beautiful, yeah. you know, flavor profile in the coffees that, you know, we source. Yeah. And, um, you know, we had nothing against dark roast, but, you know, we, we did our first dark roast uh, last year. Hmm. We've continued it this year with another dark roast. Um, and it was this beautiful single origin Colombian coffee. Yeah. And we did it one hmm. way. We light to medium roasted it and then we dark roasted it. And hmm. it was so different yeah but just so gorgeous i don't hmm. think i'd ever had a dark roasted coffee really? so nice before wow. it's very even for us yeah um but it was like one of those things where when sometimes when i have a dark roast coffee i like to put cream and sugar yeah yeah you know what i mean That's, i like yeah. that when i drink a light to medium <clears throat> roast coffee it's always black for yeah me. I, I, yeah i find that i always kind of change as well like yeah. if i've been having coffee a certain way for for a while mm-hmm. i'll switch it up yeah. And just, okay, let me add half and half or a non-dairy mm. creamer and maple syrup or what yeah. have you. Uh, we, we play around with a lot of stuff. So we, we do uh, cereal milks as well. Oh, so cool. like, nice. yeah. so lately yeah. that's what I've been getting into is, is yeah. like making the cereal milk and using that as my creamer. That's cool. At the end of the day, we just like to have fun with yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, so it keeps it fresh. Um, fun. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> as Serena was telling you, like she has this great <laughs> art background, yeah. but we're both really creative people. Um, and yeah. that's another big reason yeah. why, like we, as we started to do the events and get our coffee out there, like yeah. to open a cafe was just like such a natural progression cool. for us just from the standpoint of like, 
wow, we've got all this creative stuff that we, we don't have the space or the time to do it at a farmer's market or right. a pop-up. Right. But if we had Good our ideas. own place, yeah. Yeah. then we can do it. We, it, you know, it's not just a one time half a day introduction to people of this, this, this great latte. It's, um, consistently mm. for a week and we get to advertise yeah. it and really kind of yeah. experiment on our own too, right? Like what is the right cereal to milk right. ratio that we should be <laughs> right. using here right. or, right. you know, maple yeah. syrup or whatever it might be. Like there, yeah. there's so much to this. Um, and, and that's really what like every day is different and that's yeah. what makes it so much fun. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I really love that. And I think opening in Manlius, you know, we, we live in Manlius. Yeah. Um, so we've lived in Manlius. Actually, we've lived up the street from where we're going to be opening for the last 18 oh, years. Oh, that's cool. So, um, you know, Aaron's a, a lifelong resident. Aaron went to, you know, Cows High School okay. and everything like yeah. that. Um, I'm a transplant, uh, but I've been in the area, you know, 20 years. Yeah. So hmm. it's uh, it was really kind of fun when our when our perfect little spot came up. Yeah. You know, that's cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to do another podcast with you like uh, shortly after opening and some time to talk about like the process of, you know, what it was like and getting the place open. And oh, all that sure. Kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's intense. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. Um, so I guess first thing is where can people find you online? So people can find us. Um, so our e-commerce is www.skytopcoffee.com. Cool. Um, all of our social is equally as branded it's at sky top coffee nice uh so the instagram the facebook it's all right all there. the same yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool and you're gonna be open and they, they can buy coffee online on the website correct right. and actually we sell our holding at 20 east in casanovia yes. at cool. 85 albany street okay um so that's one of our retailers and yeah. if you are out for an evening for fine dining yeah uh Diffy cuisine yep. um they also carry our coffee as awesome. their coffee program and let me see what else. Uh, Recently, we um, we partnered up with the Sea Culture. Culture. Oh, yeah, cool! Out of Skinny Outlets. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So they yeah. they carry some of our whole bean coffee in that. their store as well. Yeah. Skinny Atlas has so much coffee out there; it's unreal. Um, we were there for a little bit in a couple of different places, but you have. Um, What's that shop that pizza? Oh, the candy at? shop at the Green Mountain. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, Green Mountain's there, uh, which that place is amazing. The Green Mountain. Yeah, I mean, um, where our family had been vacationing, uh, we've my grandfather built a place in Skinny Atlas years and years ago. And uh, so we've always been out there. And yeah, that place is like, thank God nothing's ever happened to it. Although, do you ever go to Creekside Coffee that when it was out there? Mm-mm. No. Oh man, that place was awesome. It really? was this, uh, it was over across from the tops. Okay. And it was this, now it's like a tap house, but uh, the building, half of it was a coffee shop that the guy roasted right there, had this really old, um, uh, it was almost looked like it was made out of copper uh, roaster. And so he would roast right there in the shop, but they also did lunch and like bottled beer and stuff. And it was such a cool space. And then the other side of it was a bookstore. And then slowly the bookstore closed and they kind of merged and then slowly that shut down and now it's a tap house. But it was a really cool space. Yeah. But Skinny Atlas just has like Peaks is in um, the local branch. Yep. Mm-hmm. They serve it on tap and they sell it there on tap. Uh, they serve it on drip and they <laughs> sell the whole bean there. You guys are now there. Um, Simple Roast is at Skinny Atlas Bakery. Yeah. Green Mountain is out there. There's yeah. some good coffee in Skinny yeah. Atlas. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, I, I really find, especially in the, just the central New York area, like we are, we're, we're all really spoiled because there's so much yeah. good coffee here. Um, it's really cool. Yeah. Like I, I travel all over the country pretty regularly. Yeah. And the world actually. And, and, um, <laughs> We are, we are extremely lucky. Like we've got a lot of really good coffee right here produced in Syracuse. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think I need to do a video about all the coffee roasters and do talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean like, you know, like when Aaron says he travels a lot and he does, you know, he definitely travels a lot, not only for, for, you know, business, but you know, outside of business and because he's a cup of excellence judge, he travels to, you know, Africa to right. judge coffees and crazy. he's going to travel to, you know, Central America to judge coffees and Indonesia to judge coffees and like, you know, all these crazy places. <laughs> yeah. So it's cool. We have this wealth of knowledge to pull from and be like, hmm. this is amazing, you know, or this doesn't work or, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. That's so awesome. it's fun. Yeah. Well guys, thank you so much for coming down here on a thank Saturday. You. And yeah. On the podcast. Thank you. Yeah. We really appreciate it. it. Yeah. It's nice to chat. 
Yeah, everybody find Sky Top online and look for them to open up in the spring. Yeah, 119 West Seneca Street, right in the Tops Plaza in Manlius. There we go. All right, see ya. Thank you. Bye.